Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and, well, as we've been saying for some time, the easiest way out of the current crisis in the UK is to replace the Prime Minister with someone on the anti-Brexit alliance. But this is where the difficulty has come. So what I'm going to do is give a little bit of an update as to where we are with that. But first, if you find yourself enjoying the video, then please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. So there are a range of parties and groups on the opposition benches and those opposition MPs together form a larger voting bloc than Boris Johnson's Conservatives plus DUP. That means, in theory, they can replace him as Prime Minister. They can do it really quickly and easily. People keep talking about, can we impeach Boris Johnson? Well, in theory, you can, but there's absolutely no need to. There's a much quicker process. You simply need the leader of the opposition one day to say, I issue a vote of no confidence in government. There's a particular wording. Or you can use your own word. It really doesn't matter. You can issue the motion to call for a vote of no confidence in the government. The next day, you can debate it and hold that, that vote. And then if the government's defeated, you can be forming a government. The palace can appoint the new prime minister the next day. So why hasn't it happened? Well, because of the various groups. So Jeremy Corbyn, as leader of the opposition, as leader of the largest party that is not the government party, has said that he should be the prime minister. Fair enough. He should certainly be the first person to have a crack at it. The problem is he doesn't have the numbers. And at the moment, there's an awful lot of carping going on. So Labour's position at the moment is to blame the Liberal Democrats for this because the Liberal Democrats are refusing to support Jeremy Corbyn. So who does support Jeremy Corbyn? Of course, the Labour MPs support Jeremy Corbyn. You imagine Kate Hoey wouldn't, but why the hell is she even a Labour MP? The SNP supports Labour. They support Jeremy Corbyn because he promised some time ago that uh, as Prime Minister, he would not seek to have Westminster block another independence referendum if the Scottish Parliament voted for it. Um, so they support him. Um, the, Caroline Lucas of the Green Party is happy to support him. Plaid Cymru just wants everyone to stop fighting. <laughs> They're just going to stop fighting, it's silly. Um, but the Liberal Democrats won't support Jeremy Corbyn. And so Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott, uh, John McDonnell, a few other senior members of the Labour Party have blamed the Liberal Democrats for the impasse. The issue with that is, let's say the Liberal Democrats did support Jeremy Corbyn. Does that mean he can issue his vote of no confidence and then displace Boris Johnson? No, because Jeremy Corbyn doesn't have enough numbers. If the Liberal Democrats swung behind Jeremy Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn would still be 18 MPs short. Where are they coming from? He basically needs Conservatives to support him. And there's like one of them who said, well, to stop a no deal, yes, I will. So although you can say, fair enough, Jeremy Corbyn should have first crack, at the end of the day, he does not have the numbers. Whereas the counter view to all this, and this is the view of the Liberal Democrats, is if Jeremy Corbyn, who is one person, said, tell you what, let's all support Caroline Lucas or Margaret Beckett or Ken Clark, those candidates would have the numbers because the SNP would support those, Labour would support those, uh, the Liberal Democrats would support them, the independent group would support them, various other independent MPs would support them, including the Tory rebels. So they would have the numbers. So it, it's you look at it however you like. But the bottom line is, while the current position is as it is, there is no getting rid of Boris Johnson. Now, the other thing to be said is, and this is quite worrying, every, you know, the thing about John McDonnell, who, for those who don't know, is the shadow chancellor. So he's, he's actually a very, very old political ally, very close ally of Jeremy Corbyn. And he's, he's the most, second most senior in the, the shadow cabinet, really. Chancellor is that position that's like the right hand man or woman of the, the leader. And, you know, I've, I've been quite impressed with him that he, He's developed into a decent frontline politician over the last few years. And then every time I say something like that, he goes and says something stupid. So this weekend he was interviewed and he was asked the question. So, OK, the, the position is Labour are backing Jeremy Corbyn and no one else. And that's all there is to it, that, that Jeremy Corbyn should be the interim prime minister. I've had my, my say on that and I've had the say that it actually helps Jeremy Corbyn if he didn't. But OK. They've taken a different view. 
The problem is what he, he was, he was, this was put to him. He said, let's say the only way to stop no deal Brexit, the only way was for Jeremy Corbyn to swing behind one of the non-partisan or the bipartisan compromise candidates. Would you do it? And John McDonald, and he wouldn't have said this if he hadn't, you know, conferred with Jeremy Corbyn. So this is basically the Labour's position. He said no. So Labour's official position now, and there's been no denial or even reining back. Sometimes when John McDonald says something or even Jeremy Corbyn says something uh, and it blows up a little bit, they retract it a little bit or they at least pedal back a bit. There has been no pedalling back of this comment. So Labour's official position at the moment is that Labour would rather have a no-deal Brexit than to have, say, Caroline Lucas be Prime Minister for a few weeks just to get the extension. Just that. It's also, if you think about it, Labour's therefore stated position that they would rather have Boris Johnson as Prime Minister than Caroline Lucas or Margaret Beckett or Ken Clark. That, that's actually what their position is, um, which is a fairly foolish corner to paint yourself in at that point. Now, potentially what they are doing here, that isn't necessarily what they privately intend just what they're publicly saying because in the game of chicken if Jeremy Corbyn for whatever reason I actually don't actually I don't understand why he even wants the position because Jeremy most of the other opposition parties want the following to happen they want an interim prime minister in place but they want them in place for a fair amount of time because they want to first of all obtain the extension then they want a public vote to get rid of Brexit altogether and then have a general election where we can actually have a general election based on what the issues that general elections are supposed to be about and not a single constitutional issue. But that's not what Jeremy Corbyn wants. Jeremy Corbyn wants the extension, so he says. But remember, their position is they're not actually that bothered about the extension now. But officially, they want the extension and immediately after it, a general election. OK, so in that case, why is he so desperate to become prime minister for a few weeks and conversely why is it so awful to allow someone like let's say Ken Clark he's not even standing at the next election he's not technically a conservative anymore obviously he's behaving like a conservative but he's not in the party he is of no threat to Jeremy Corbyn's electoral chances in the election there's no nothing bad happens to Labour in the election as a result of getting behind Ken Clark. But if he doesn't want to get behind Ken Clark, I totally get that. That's why I always suggested Caroline Lucas, left wing, an MP, uh, the only MP of her party in there. Or he could get behind Margaret Beckett again. You know, she's not standing either. Uh, she's well respected and she's a Labour MP if he prefers that. I don't understand if given that whoever takes over is only going to take over literally for a, for a, a few weeks that the, you know, they could seek an extension. If he got rid of Boris Johnson immediately, they could seek the extension immediately. They could get it within a few days. You would think the EU Council are ready to go. Get Parliament to approve it. Once it's signed, sealed and delivered, trigger the general election. Like seven weeks later, you've got your general election and the Prime Minister has been in place for like a few weeks. Why is he so desperate to be in that position for a few weeks? Makes no sense. If he's going to trigger the general election and if he thinks he's going to win the general election, he's going to be prime minister anyway, isn't he? But with an actual mandate from the public. Isn't that better than being an unelected prime minister, which is what he's accused Boris Johnson of? So that's the situation. We've, lit we've got Labour who are digging the hills in. Now, the final thing I will just say is what this is really about, in my view. And what it is about is the general election. The Liberal Democrats desperately want to get as many MPs as possible. In this vein, they have been distancing themselves as much as possible from the Conservatives, which is quite easy, but also from Labour. So that's why they're behaving like this. On the same grounds, that is also why, you know, the Lib Dems are behaving like this, the Labour are behaving like this, they're both behaving like this. Both of them see each other as rivals in the general election and they're both chasing the same votes. Um, not all of the same, obviously the very left-wing votes are not going to vote Lib Dem, but there's a lot of Remain votes, particularly on the centre-left, 
that are going to vote Lib Dem as things stand. And Jeremy Corbyn is desperate to distinguish himself to, to, to not that the Lib Dems are seeking the position of prime minister themselves, but that's, you know, that's that position. And then the other thing, of course, is Jeremy Corbyn's political calculation has always been for the past few years that Brexit will destroy the Conservatives. Now, it hasn't because Brexit hasn't happened. But from his point of view, if Boris Johnson were to succeed in a no deal Brexit and he can't succeed in his no deal Brexit if he's replaced as prime minister, then a general election takes place a few weeks after the consequences become obvious, then actually that could kill off the Conservatives, at least for the time being. And Jeremy Corbyn believes he'll be the beneficiary of that. So he's also the party leader that is least afraid of a no deal Brexit. And that's ultimately another reason why the likes of the Lib Dems and the Tory rebels don't want to get behind Jeremy Corbyn because they don't trust him because he is, after all, a Brexiteer. So that's where we are. Do I think that we will ever get rid of Boris Johnson with a vote of no confidence? Unless Jeremy Corbyn is lying, I don't really see it. Uh, it is possible that the Lib Dems and all of the Tory rebels would swing behind him if it was literally the only way to secure an extension. That's possible. It's possible that Labour would swing behind someone else if that didn't happen. We can't say. All we can say is what they are saying publicly at the moment. We have to go on the assumption that they're not lying, even though politicians do have a bit of a habit, if we're honest. Um, and, and the situation at the moment is it can't possibly happen without someone or at least one group, significant group massively going back on what they're said. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.